So I remember the stone is very porous in appearance and has a variety of blue shades from a very gray blue to a very pale blue and quite a variety of shapes. It's waste material, which I don't like to think of it that way because it's so beautiful, but it's slag. Leland had some other resources that were part of an iron smelting operation that this looked like a good deal. Um, what Leland had was great access to forests of hardwoods, hardwoods that could be made into charcoal, Charcoal is needed to smelt iron ore and create what they call pig iron or very crude kind of iron that then needs to be shipped out to a place where actually to iron foundry, which is where it's further refined and made into implements. The big problem up here was that Leland had no good harbor. But they thought they could um, surmount that by building a great big dock out into the lake and filling these cribs of wood, or cribs which are be like log, little log cabins or okay. frameworks out of logs, mm -hmm. fill them with slag that they were creating from the smelting process, and they'd actually be able to create a permanent dock. It was labor intensive, loading and unloading these boats sometimes three or four days at a time, and if, if bad weather came up, the boats had to wait offshore. Leland was that time the real boom town just a small little village um, which had gotten it started from having a, being on the river so they had access to water power to have a sawmill. Actually it became a boom town because they had to bring in people to cut the hardwood to make the, the, the charcoal and then they needed more men to load and unload the boats. So actually a great, there was a great um, population boom where many people came to town. This is a, a painting that's done by Carson Warner who was born and raised here in Leland, and in 1876, as a teenager, he was a clerk at the Iron Works, probably about 17 years old. And it is a, just a wonderful record that we have of what it might have actually have looked like. A picture of Leland um, during the time when the Ironwork buildings were still there. You can see the dome, on the, over on the right-hand side, you can see the dome-like kills, or charcoal kills that are where the Bluebird restaurant is now, in the early bird restaurant. And then there was a little tramway that took the charcoal down to the um, furnace. It was after a storm, uh, and they, I found some different sizes along the beach, uh, uh, kind of a, a bluish um, aqua color, and they had been smoothed out by because uh, he had rolled in with the waves and they've been smoothed out over the years. My dad researched out all the history of the ironworks and put together an article which appeared in the, the um, 1944 history edition of the Leelanau Enterprise. One thing about the history of the smelter is uh, the conditions of Lake Michigan between Escanaba and Leland um, with the transporting of the iron ore over in the um, uh, and then taking the finished product off down to uh, um, different cities like Cleveland, Detroit, and so forth, the weather played a big factor in uh, whether you could leave the harbor um, because of the, of the weather conditions. And this was found 20 years ago by my friend Beth Howard. She was walking along the beach and found this beautiful oh. example. Oh, how exciting. And then it, it turns into also this green almost. Yeah, there's a green uh, shade as well. So it, there's a variation in the colors. My mother found this in 1941. As a native um, and being involved with the fishing industry, believe it or not, a lot of these blue stones that we find, that I found, the larger ones like this and this, uh, actually came out of fish nets because bluestones was slag that uh, was found at uh, a byproduct of the foundry and rather than trying to transport them anywhere the easiest thing to do is take them out dump them in the lake mm -hmm. and just just that was their way of discarding them so that's why there's so many of them all rolled up on the beach and they're all nice and fine but if you got them while they were in the lake they were a much rougher form the secret spot is Leland because that's the only place that they were found yes. and if they if you find them in Northport it's because someone must have thrown them there because they didn't have a foundry there. Mm -hmm.
um, you know, back when I was in my early years, so to speak, teens and so forth, when you'd walk the beach, you'd characteristically find large blue stones like this all over the place. Mm -hmm. and they were kind of fun to catch because they would be in the surf and so forth, and they were like, like diamonds, you'd pick yes. them up and so forth. I have a large collection. I didn't bring a whole bunch with me other than these large, large examples. Mm -hmm. This is the real turquoise colored blue stone that you don't see very much because it is a very uh, soft version of blue stone and it cracks and it's got a lot of impurities, a lot of, uh, I'm assuming, some sort of smelting material that's Im embedded in it. And if you leave it outside at all, uh, the win in the winter, if it freezes, it just mm -hmm. blows up, it, it disintegrates. But mm -hmm. this is a really nice large turquoise uh, one. You can see some of the blue um, glass, like blue, on the surface of this one. So somewhere along the way, this was not as hot as the rest of them and didn't form into a nice, perfect blue glass. Whereas this, if we were to break it open, which I'm not going to, um, would be all of the hard blue stone mm -hmm. uh, inside here. Of course, you do get all of the slag on the back of it as well. But this entire piece right here, and you can see a little piece of charcoal that is, was embedded in it. Oh. Probably um, discarded when the furnace was boiling mm -hmm. and doing so, it still has a little piece of charcoal in it. There's a lot more of this type of stone, but you don't see a lot of it because they used it actually in building and so forth. It's a little bit stronger, it's a glass, there's mm -hmm. another piece of charcoal embedded in that. The ones that seem to be treasured are the true blue stones, which you see in right these. Here. Yeah, this uh, lovely lamp my wife gave me. I mean, my dad did not like some of this stuff because yes. it would rip his nets up. And um, but you know, if you got something like this, he'd bring it in and give it to his kids to play with or break <laughs> up. And unfortunately, we didn't know the value of it back then, and you used to break it up and throw it at each other. And... They collect it, <laughs> and I've seen them um, uh, in. A, I, I know that a, a fireplace exists up in the room that was made from the blue stone uh, when they were still the larger pieces that could be found. And they've, of course, they've um, the jewelry is being made from them now, which is quite beautiful. Now, when I was a young boy, at the age of five. And I guess 